Hey, what's going on guys, it's Cynical. So as of right now, there are a small handful of people, whether they be in Australia, the UK or Japan, currently playing the Kingdom Hearts Missing Link closed beta. The game as of the time of this recording has been out for about five and a half hours and it has been information, footage and news overload when it comes to Missing Link. And I'm just gonna say straight off the bat, man, I am so excited for this. It is looking so good and it's a mobile phone game. Are you kidding me? But it looks so good. Uh, obviously, there's those to be expected mobile phone game tropes that are in this, but looking past all of that, I think uh, Square Enix have cooked up a really cool uh, portable Kingdom Hearts experience, one that is infinite times better than what we got with Kingdom Hearts Union Cross, believe me. Um, I have been receiving a bunch of information about the game from uh, a few of my friends who have current access to the closed beta. They've also provided me with a lot of different images as well as footage. Most of the footage that you guys are going to be seeing throughout this video has been uh, kindly provided to me by Sai, a good friend of mine in the community. Shout out to you, dude. Uh, his Twitter link is going to be in the description down below. Please go show him some love. Now, this is only going to be the first Missing Link video out of probably quite a few to come because over the next week, while people have access for this next week, there is going to be more details kind of sifting through. Uh, even though it's been five hours, though, there's a lot to unpack here. Like, a lot. You guys are in for an absolute treat. Uh, just before we get into this video, I want to say, be sure to follow me over on my socials. We are fast approaching 60k followers on Twitter. Uh, make sure to follow me there for stupid stuff, like really dumb stuff. If, if you're into really dumb stuff, then that suits you. Also, be sure to check out the Missing Link playlist on my channel too. There's quite a few videos in there that sort of uh, further explain the mechanics of the game. We'll be doing a bit of that in this video, but more so just going over the new stuff and not uh, rehashing over stuff we already kind of know. First of all, let's take a look at the character customization as that is literally going to be the very first thing that you do in Missing Link. The character customization is sort of like Union Crosses, but that next step. This is a 3D Kingdom Hearts game, so you're going to have your own personal 3D Kingdom Hearts avatar. Now, the initial customization, there's a little bit of depth to it, actually more than I was expecting. There's two different body types that you can pick from. Uh, there's also voice options as well, though currently in the closed beta as of right now, uh, the character doesn't have any actual audio for any voice lines. Um, that will be something that will be later on added probably into the full version or a later beta test. Because yes, your character does actually speak in cutscenes. You can pick from a few different hair options. They do seem quite limited uh, as of right now, but again, this is something that might expand into the full version. And I'm also betting on it that you'll eventually be able to also buy additional hairstyles too uh, with real money. You can also obtain more customizations for your character like hairstyles by doing certain different objectives in the game. You're able to change your hair color and there is an actual like color slider so you can get the exact color that you want. Uh, you can put highlights into your hair. You can change the eye color of your character even down to the point of changing the individual eye color for both the left and right eye. There is mouth customization as well as nose customization. You've also got eyebrow customization, the actual face shape of your character, and even makeup as well. And yes, there's even blemishes and scars to go along with it all too. When it comes to clothing pieces, you have a hat slot, a top slot, a pants slot, a glove slot, and a boot slot. So you can imagine later on down the track when you've accumulated a lot of different uh, clothing pieces, the customization can actually get quite in depth. Now, I will say that uh, yes, just as we predicted, uh, clothing will be a buyable thing, basically with jewels. I should just straight off the bat mention right now that the gacha microtransaction side um, of the Kingdom Hearts mobile game thing is back, just like we predicted. I mean, there was never going to be a Square Enix mobile phone game that didn't include some kind of jewel premium currency uh, system. It is in here, and yes, 
clothing pieces or clothing sets more so should I say are going to be one thing that you can spend your jewels on. One other thing I should mention too is I don't know if this applies for all clothing items within the game but I know for at least some you are able to also change the color of these too. So again it does seem like there's a lot of different options when it comes to actually defining your character making it so that you can really make a Keyblade wielder of your own. Now jumping back over to the jewel conversation there is three categories of things that you can spend your jewels on. Like I just said, the customization items you can buy. There's also an item shop that will allow you to buy things like AP. So yeah, you can actually spend your jewels uh, in order to accumulate more AP. This is going to be the resource that will allow you to scour the world out in that GPS mode without actually having to physically leave your home. It should be noted about jewels as well, just like Union Cross, uh, that you will be able to actually accumulate jewels by free to play means, meaning that you don't actually have to spend money, there will be different methods by just simply playing the game that will reward you jewels. Other items here include stuff like mega potions, potions, uh, ethers, elixirs, all of these do exactly what you would expect them to do from a normal traditional Kingdom Hearts game, restore MP and HP. Uh, things like these traditional items, potions and ethers and stuff, you can also obtain out in the world by finding treasure chests. So don't worry, you don't have to spend money or anything like that to get normal items. And yes, the third category here is the gacha side. There is a gacha side. You can spend jewels in order to pull a certain amount of different pieces. So just like Union Cross, that banner thing is back. If you want to pull a banner that has a chance to draw 10 different pieces, it's going to cost you 3,000 jewels, just like Union Cross. So it seems like it's the exact same kind of setup. Uh, all of the different pieces have different uh, chances of obviously being able to be pulled. You can see the pull rates via a menu in the game. There are some other banners as well, which will require specifically a ticket to be used in order to pull from that banner. You'll be able to obtain these via other means by just playing the game or doing certain different missions or quests. There is also another shop that uh, uses different coins like trade activity coins, trade accessory coins, peace coins, assist coins, news coins, and trade two star coins. Uh, yeah, these I believe will also be obtained by just doing random activities throughout the game. Possibly they could be found in chests, but each of these are their own individual different shops that contain all sorts of different cool things like accessories to give you passive bonuses or other useful items to help you out in gameplay. So let's talk about some actual gameplay and let's talk about the prologue, the very beginning portion of Missing Link. So when you start the game, you'll be presented with a dive to heart, your very own personal one for your very own Keyblade Wielder. The stained glass here for this one is of course Cherithy Skold and Ephema. We saw this in the most recent trailer. It is a gorgeous looking stained glass. This is basically going to give us a rundown on exactly uh, what the control scheme is all about, how to control the player character, how combat works. The player character is presented to choose between one of three different character pieces to start you off. This is Goofy, Donald, or Mickey. What I really love about this is this is directly mirroring the dream weapons that we see Sora have to pick from in Kingdom Hearts 1, with Goofy representing the dream shield, Donald representing the dream staff, and Mickey clearly representing the dream sword. A very nice little touch. We then see a bunch of starlights rain down from the sky, and we're then presented with our Starlight, our Keyblade. Now, this is a maxed out one, by the way, so clearly this dude in his past life has been putting in the work. I do want to mention that because the player character has the stained glass of uh, Ephemer and Skuld, Cherithy, and receiving the Starlight, this pretty much does mean a direct connection to the player character of Union Cross. It's something that I missed in my previous Missing Link video when explaining the new trailer. Uh, it is explained at the end of Dark Road that the player character lived two lives, it's likely that this player character here is actually a reincarnation of the UX player character living out the second life, hence we're seeing the Starlight Keyblade. We then get a little brief combat situation here, we have to face off against some shadows. Again, very classic. It'll give us a rundown on how combat works. 
so this is combat in action. Uh, my friend right here is using touch controls to begin with. Later on, you'll see some gameplay of him actually using the PlayStation backbone with the phone. Uh, yes, controller support is here, so do not fret. You can lock onto an enemy by simply tapping on them. Their status will be up the top with their health and level. You can then also quickly lock on to the next corresponding enemy by simply tapping on them or of course tapping the arrow to go between the group of enemies. Very handy. Control the character with your left thumb. You've got an attack button, a jump button, as well as a little camera analog as well above those to move the camera. The dodge roll, you simply flick the screen. And yes, you can also aerial dodge as well by jumping and proceeding to flick the screen. You can have up to four character pieces equipped at once. Right here in the tutorial, you simply start with one. We can see Donald right here. And to activate them, you simply just tap on them. Uh, using the abilities, which are the pieces, will consume MP. So you do have to be mindful of exactly how you manage your MP with the abilities that you have equipped. You can also see any passive effects that the character currently has just above the HP bar. You can perform a charge attack by holding down the attack button, charging it to either 100, 200, or 300% for extra damage. The player character then unseals that all too familiar door and ends up in Scarlet Kylum with no memory of where they've come from or even who they are. Now, we then get the introduction of Ramus, who is obviously going to be a very important uh, main character throughout the story of Missing Link. It's basically on a patrol, came across a distortion, which is these different things that happen around Scarlet at Kylum. Usually bad things happen when distortions uh, appear, usually heartless or drifters. At this stage, Ramus is under the impression that we don't know anything about the Keyblade uh, or, or how to fight or anything. A dark side appears and we've got to fight the dark side with Ramus. After a tussle bustle and rustle with the dark side, which by the way, this dark side is a miniature dark side. Like, for some, for some reason, he's lacking nutrients because this is not the usual size of a dark side. Once we slap that Bootang, we then get the rundown of a drifter. So, basically, a drifter is a person that is supposedly come from a different world, a different place altogether. A person that is not from the world of Scarlet and Kylum. Apparently, a drifter doesn't appear all too often, but we do know that there are at least a couple in this version of Scarlet. We have Ephema, who is the founding father of the entire city and we also have brain both of which are drifters because there is a term for people like this though it does make me think that there's likely going to be other people probably not many but a few more in Scala and throughout the story that we'll meet that also didn't originally come from Scala but rather somewhere else. Ramus also mentions what society that we belong to before coming to the conclusion that we are a drifter. This does mean that in similar fashion to Union Cross which had unions uh, Missing Link will have societies, though I do have to say that in the closed beta there is no option of selecting what society you're a part of or if we even know we will end up selecting a society. But what we know from the narrative point of view is there are different societies. I would say probably in the full version of the game you will have an option to actually select what society you want to belong to. If it's going to follow Union Cross, there will likely be five. We then get to choose our player character's name and the prologue section of the game is over. And by the way, how gorgeous is this ancient Scala World logo? It is phenomenal. And just look at the city too, man. Like, um, this is such a beautiful looking game considering it is a mobile phone game. That being said, it is a pretty beefy mobile phone game. As I've mentioned in the past, this is all running on Unreal Engine, using a lot of the assets that we've already seen in Kingdom Hearts 3. Visually speaking, the fidelity has been downgraded a little bit from KH3, because it's, it's not a console title, but still, it's a very gorgeous looking game. Now from here, there isn't much more story stuff uh, included in the closed beta. Uh, obviously, the entire point of the closed beta is to test the actual functionality of the game itself and to report any bugs. So that's pretty much as far as it goes in regards to narrative. Now players are freely able to explore Skyla. It is pretty big for the most part. I'm not too sure if what we are seeing here in the closed beta is absolutely everything, 
but it, it, it's gorgeous just to be able to see more of Scalar and a different version of that to roam the streets to see different NPCs wandering around. By the way, too, while you're roaming the streets, uh, you are able to actually come across different players so this acts as an actual online hub you can also interact with some of the npcs and the npcs will also be having conversations in amongst themselves as well this is quite a lively place the shot that sai got right here is really cool it shows us the outer city limits of ancient scala i was really curious to see this only because I want to know the layout of this version of Scarlet compared to the one that we see in Kingdom Hearts 3 and in Dark Road. We know that version is a bunch of man-made islands in the middle of the ocean, whereas from what we're seeing here, Ancient Scarlet seems to just perhaps maybe be one. I don't want to confirm that, uh, but we can't see any other off in the distance uh, out in the ocean. It seems like it's just one island. Uh, at this point. Well, it is just one big-ish area to sort of run around for the hub that we see here in the closed beta. I can only assume that for when the full version does come out and story updates start to roll out, because there are gates on either side of this area, perhaps maybe they'll eventually open and more areas of the Scala City will become accessible. Players can then proceed into what is known as the dive station. In the most recent trailer, we got a little clip of this sort of mechanical looking industrial area. This exact area is the actual device that is used to transport Keyblade wielders from Scala of Kylum into our world, our actual real physical world, which is insane to think about. Planet Earth is actually a canon world in the narrative of Kingdom Hearts. The players go through into the dive station and they then are drawn into the actual real world map, which is the GPS mode. It'll send you straight to your real physical location. From here, you can start wandering the streets and engage in different numerous activities. Now, while I'm assuming that there will be in the full version narrative quests that will make you have to actually go out into the astral plane, whether you are using AP to do so, which means you don't have to leave your house or physically going out, uh, the main core experience here from what I understand is just simply exploring. The game wants you to leave your home, explore your neighborhood, come across Heartless that will be roaming the streets, fight them for sweet rewards and XP, as well as uncover treasure chests. But the main thing that you're going to be doing here is uncovering those character icons. You'll see different familiar Disney characters. If you walk up to these, you'll be thrown into a combat scenario. From what I've seen so far, this will pit you uh, up against an NPC Keyblade wielder. So you'll have a lot of different humanoid-based uh, fights. These are NPCs, these are not actual real players, by the way. And it will set a different challenge, like defeat the enemy in 30 seconds or a certain time limit. If you complete this combat task, you will then be awarded with the corresponding character piece. Now, while you're doing stuff out in the real world, you will be accumulating AP. So it seems like from what I've read so far, there are more means to actually accumulating AP. Basically, any successful combat scenario, whether it be the character piece combat scenario or just normal Heartless that you're defeating out in the world, you'll be rewarded AP. You'll also notice these like little green waypoint things all down the streets. These are almost like lamp posts. Coming across those will also award you with AP. The gameplay that you're seeing right now is Sai playing on touch mode. So this is him actually going out into the world, but without actually having to physically do so. This means anything that he is currently doing is going to require him to use AP. Heartless are important here too, because if you defeat Heartless, you'll eventually be given a hint as to exactly where the area boss is. This is a stronger boss encounter that will provide you with better rewards and will also unlock an additional teleport point. These teleport points are important as they can then be later on used, costing AP to teleport directly to that point, to that location you physically went to without actually physically needing to go there. Let's say though you have a surplus amount of AP and you want to travel somewhere overseas, you can do that. It's just going to cost you a lot of AP. So there are means to play in the game without actually leaving or physically going anywhere. You're just going to have to make sure that you get AP. The game is certainly trying to incentivize people to actually physically go out to places. And while I'm sure there is probably going to be daily login bonuses that will give you AP, we also know you can spend jewels 
on AP. The main means to accumulating this resource will be just doing things like combat, like actually leaving your house. So just keep that in mind. Growth log down the bottom are like your objectives for receiving unique rewards as well as passive effects. So this one right here is telling us to visit a recovery post, which is those little green waypoint things. If we do that, we get a reward. Others might be find an elixir uh, out in the wild or successfully complete five combat encounters. This is the thing you'll probably be working on the most as you're out and about. There is a full on globe and world map for the entire planet Earth where you can pinch and zoom in and out and pretty much teleport all over the place. Just keeping in mind so long as you have enough AP. The further away the location as to where you're teleporting to, the higher the AP costs. So let's talk about more of the other tidbits and miscellaneous pieces. Uh, who is this new female character? Well, we got the name reveal. She is Freya. She's going to be a, another important character when it comes to the narrative. Uh, yeah, Nomura is keeping up with the naming conventions of Norse origin character names here. We already have an abundance, especially from Dark Road. A lot of the classmates in Dark Road all have Norse origin names like Volda, like Vor, like Brage. Uh, we also have Skold from the Key Saga. There is also Odin from Dark Road, who is the master. And also within Missing Link, another important character is Sigurd. As I mentioned, Missing Link does have controller support. Uh, I will most definitely be using a controller. That is the natural way to play a Kingdom Hearts game. The DualSense controller, as well as DualShock 4 and the Xbox controller are all compatible. But uh, one method that uh, Sai has been using, and the footage is right here, as you can see, he's using a Sony backbone. And this is probably going to be the most optimal way to play Missing Link, rather than having to like hold your phone and a controller, which is almost impossible to do, or to have some kind of brace, or to have to actually put your phone down. You've got your phone and controller all connected, bang in one. This is almost like seeing uh, a modern day Kingdom Hearts PlayStation Portable title. It is beautiful. Another thing that jewels can be spent on right here is reviving. So let's say you die during a mission or something like that. Uh, you can actually spend 30 jewels to revive your character. Uh, yeah, this is in Union Cross. So this is not a new thing. It used to cost 100 jewels to continue in Union Cross. So they've actually made it cheaper, which is kind of nice. Um, <laughs> it's just, it, it makes me laugh because it's almost like Charity pops up and it's like, hey, you don't want to come to the final world, give me them credit card details, son. The Moogle that we were talking about in the trailer that from a distance appeared like it was a cloaked organization Moogle is in fact not an organization Moogle, but rather a Moogle wearing uh, the ancient Scala attire. I think he looks absolutely fantastic. It kind of gets me a little bit big sad that it's not a time traveling organization Moogle. But still, he is drippy nonetheless, and this Moogle will provide you with a bunch of different combat challenges uh, that in return will give you jewels. These combat challenges actually take place in Skyler. Talking about the heads up display real quick, uh, you can customize it to your absolute liking. You can drag all of the touchscreen buttons around anywhere on the screen, any of the information displays, you can completely customize it to your liking. Very nice. Now you're probably curious about battery consumption. Uh, from what I have heard from numerous reports, it can be a little bit draining. Uh, Sai has told me, he's using an iPhone 12 for reference, that about half an hour of play uh, used about 20% of battery. Now there is a battery saver mode on top of the already inbuilt battery saver mode that's in most phones, but uh, enabling this in game pretty much lowers performance a little bit, so less frame rate, uh, but of course you won't be draining your battery as fast. It is suggested that like, if you are going to be playing the game for long periods of time while you're out and about, because that's the whole concept of the game, you should probably have a portable charging station. You can play the game in both portrait and landscaped mode, and the game seamlessly can switch between both of them. There are some graphic settings, they are pretty minimal. We've got building height, decorations, and building detail. It is great that these are here uh, because Missing Link is supported by a wide range of different phone models. There's quite a bit of new music in the game as well when looking at the general field theme of the Scala Town and even some new combat music. 
uh, we do have some new arrangements. There is an overall day and night cycle. When it is daytime, it will be daytime in Scala as well as in the astral plane, and same goes for nighttime. The astral plane even corresponds to the current weather in your current location, which is really cool. So if it's raining, it'll be raining in the astral plane. Uh, if it's snowing, it'll be snowing. You get the gist. And lastly, I had to show off this clip because I think this is like the very first Missing Link tech video. It's nothing crazy or anything like that, but still cool to know that you can perform some pretty uh, awesome stuff in combat. And no doubt when we see more footage of more abilities being used and later on down the track, where more figures get added, there'll be some more crazy attacks to pull off. Uh, it goes to show that there may potentially be a lot of depth when it does actually come to the combat system. I should also mention, just talking about the combat system, that there is no guard. All of your defensive moves are based around abilities as well as dodging. So guys, that is all for the meantime. That is a lot to take in. Um, also too, it is currently like five o'clock in the morning and I desperately need to get some sleep. So I'm gonna cut it here. Uh, there is still so much to talk about and as I said, uh, beta uh, participants do have access for the next eight days, so more information is definitely going to funnel out, especially uh, over time as people kind of get a better understanding as to how all of the systems work. I also want to talk about Keyblades as well, so we'll get there soon. But however guys, thank you so much for tuning in, and I want to say a massive thank you to Silent. Like, this video really wouldn't be possible to this degree with the quality of footage. Uh, if it wasn't for him. So thank you so much, dude. I really do appreciate that. You have helped me out tenfold. As I mentioned, guys, be sure to follow me on all of my other platforms. Links in the description down below. Hopefully you guys are having a fantastic day. Be sure to drop your thoughts and opinions about Missing Link down below. And I'll catch you guys real soon. Peace.